Hey friends, we are here today with Jenna Zoe and we're talking human design. We're talking what kind of generator you are. What's the profile? The profile of energy type, your energy type. Thank mm-hmm. you. So I am a manifester generator. You uh-huh. are a projector. Mm-hmm. Kelsey and Pooja are also manifestor generators, but you can find out what you are and how to live your life according to your energy type, mm-hmm. which I think is really powerful. Yeah. The way you're aligned, what it looks like for you. Everybody wants to know how to live and everybody has an innate way that they came in with. So instead of listening to this person telling you what success looks like or what the best diet for you is or whatever it is, figuring out what coming back to what your innate way is, is really freeing. So you can work with your energy, not against it. Mm. Friends, don't forget to hit subscribe. Hello, hello, everybody. (laughs) Welcome to Better Together. When you know better, you get better. That is what we do here every single day. We try at least. I think we're accomplishing. I think we're getting there. We're crushing. I think we're crushing too. Uh, Our quote of the day comes from our guest today. To me, human design is the contract your soul makes with the universe about who you came to be, what you came to do, and what karma you came to correct this lifetime around. And that is from Jenna Zoe. Heel Squad, welcome back. Happy to have you here. Thanks for being here with us. That quote is from our guest today, Jenna Zoe, as I said, who's going to be teaching us all about human design. Apparently, you heel squatters have been demanding some human design. So Kelsey dug deep and found someone for us. Woo. I'm so excited. I can barely hear you. Oh, nuts. Yeah. Oh, it is a little muffled. It's a little bit Hello, muffled. hello, hello. There we go. Weird. Yeah. Huh. Usually it blows my uh, sound out over here when it's high, but... Here we are. Here we are. Now I can hear you. But yeah, Um, Jenna is an expert in human design. She um, has been studying this for, I think it was like eight years Mm -hmm. or something. Uh, It's a new system of self-discovery, helping reconnect people to who they came to this planet to be. So she discovered it some seven or eight years ago. It became her passion, her obsession, and her life. She now helps hundreds of thousands of people around the globe understand themselves better through human design. Her main goal is to help people understand who they are and how they function so that they can spend their energy emphasizing their unique gifts and talents, so cool, rather than trying to be more like how they've been conditioned to be. Mm. So breaking away all the exterior stuff and just getting to the interior stuff. And I know, Queen, there was a quiz that I did not get to take, but I believe you and Pooja might have taken it. (laughs) You bet. I have mine printed. <laughs> like I have made a lot of changes in my life according to it. Really? And, oh yeah. And I have Jenna's app. It's so wild. Pooja and I are bit, have very similar charts. Really? Like there's five different energy types and design types. We have the same one. And then there's like multiple breakdowns. Like we were very similar. It was very interesting. That's funny. And I'm pretty sure you're a generator from when you took it before. And I remember. And I I'm, took this test before? Uh-huh. Uh, months ago. When was it like it this specific one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So when it popped up a couple months ago when someone had brought it up to us, we all took it. And I'm like 99% sure you're a generator, which actually makes sense. Jenna will go more into it. But generators are typically very like sparkly people. People are drawn to them. Like, so I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. That's real. <laughs> so anywho, yeah. Which is so funny that you and Pooja were the same because... I know. By the way, for everyone who has a struggle with Pooja's name... <laughs> Pooja, <laughs> would you spell it for everyone? There you go. It's, oh, it's P O O J A. Okay. I figured they'd hear it from you. I know how to spell I'm it. Uh, but I figure just to help everybody, because I feel bad. They're always like, I think this is how you spell it. I think I'm doing it right. Um, but it's funny because I've been telling, I was talking to Marie Forleo about you guys and. I was like, they have such complementary skill sets, like very yin and yang. You guys are very different Mm -hmm. to me. And that's what makes us a good team, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you have all the same, oh gosh, then who's going to do the stuff that the other person doesn't want to do or isn't skilled at, right? And so like, we're not technically the organizers. I strive, I try but Pooja is. <laughs> and so we were like, right away, we we're like, okay, yeah. <laughs> we got someone who's going to keep us on track. Truly. But it's funny to see that you guys were the same. I know. That was my exact same thought hmm. because we were like, wait, but we're so different. Who makes this test? I don't know. We got to ask her about we gotta it. We got to ask her. Yeah. Cause there was, it was, and we weren't the same on everything, but it was like, we had the same energy types, but I guess that 
it's less about like your personality and mm-hmm. more about like what your soul's purpose is, if that makes sense. Got it. So it's like Pooja and I have a very similar soul purpose, I guess. Very cool. Or how we function. I don't know. Well, I, uh, I look forward to being able to do the test yeah. and, and getting to see because I wonder now after all the Dr. Joe Dispenza stuff, how it will kind of land with mm. me. Guys, I did my pineal gland meditation again last night. Oh my gosh. And I did a morning set my intention for my future meditation. I was going to do a walking meditation today, <laughs> but now I have to rush around and go do a bunch of stuff. So um, yeah, things are going really well. I'm excited for you. <laughs> and I'm also going to have you do this um, in in the quick break we take because all you do is put your time, your birth time in and I know your birth time and your birthday and your birthplace. So we're going to find out your chart. Cool. Cause I don't remember my yeah, birth time. I got you. But uh, yeah, we will take a quick break because when we come back, we're going to talk all about human design and you guys are going to hopefully love it. All right, Jenna, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thanks for being here. It's so nice to be here. I mean, the entrance was stunning we're like in a we're like in a separate vortex i don't feel like i'm in la at all i know that's when i when i first saw this house um the gate was open you could see through and i said this is the house and my husband's Mm. like you haven't seen it i said i don't care what the house looks like i just want this yard it's and so yeah it's really mediterranean yeah it's it's my little citrus orchard. So I always have um, Beautiful. the trellis with the roses mm-hmm. has a little mailbox with bags and there's a picker. So I just tell everyone, oh. just go citrus picking. And there's everything from honey mandarins, tangerines, pomelos, no. tangelos, blood oranges, lemon, <gasps> lime, and then a million other kinds of oranges that I don't even remember at this point. So, wow. Yeah. That's, I was actually just in Ibiza the last two months I was there. And the one thing I really missed from there, I was thinking like, God, I just, because we were like shopping for stuff before this. Uh-huh. I was like, oh, I'm just not that inspired by the lemons. I really miss the Ibiza lemons. And then we drove into the, <laughs> like I mean, literally perfect. you could pick till like tomorrow and I'd still have plenty of lemons. So have a ball. <laughs> I will. Everybody who comes on the show goes on a picking tour. I'm going to take you up on and it. And now there's so much jasmine as well, because mm. I lined most of the property with jasmine. So to all always smell like heaven. And so now you can go on a sniffing tour as well. So I love it. I actually took one and put it in my bra already. Did you it, really? Yeah. It's like an old grandma. Well, my grandma used to do that. No like way. Put one in her, yeah. Cause then it gives you like a nice scent all day. I love that. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a powerful, um, powerful thing, that little Jasmine. So now I'm going to start wearing Brilliant. it in my bra. There you go. Do you really smell it on yourself? Yeah. You know what? I can't even get perfume wow. to smell on me. So if I could just have free jasmine. Can you my imagine? Tree. Or to put the citrus peel on your wrists. Oh, yeah. Because that helps with, um, I think that's like a mood lifter and stuff. I'm sure. Yeah. Because those are the wow. essential oils like mm-hmm. they make for, for all of that. I think I've done lemon for that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, there you go. We have a lot of, uh, a lot of fresh new ideas for us. And we haven't even gone into human design yet. And we haven't even gotten into human design, but uh, the girls, we've all done our tests now officially. So I am a manifestor generator. We're all three. Manifesting. All three of us Isn't are. that crazy? Stop. Who We're created all this test? Okay. So it was down. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. So it was discovered slash downloaded slash put together um, 35 years ago. So it's a really new modality. And it was by a guy who was, um, he basically figured out that the chakra system, the Chinese I Ching, the Kabbalah, which has like 10 levels of sort of energy levels of presence in the world and astrology, he kind of like put them all together and figured out how they all sort of like intersect. Mm -hmm. And so it basically became super clear to him, like, okay, if we map the position of the planets, not just against the um, houses and star signs that they're in, but also according to the 64 different energies available to us as told by the Chinese I Ching, we can actually map um, human qualities and human traits. But depending on the time you're born. So that's, he basically designed, okay, if we take astrology, we inter- like juxtapose it over the Chinese I Ching, this is how we can come up with basically a map of who you came here to be. And the whole idea behind human design is like, before you come here, you already decide like, what's your mission on this planet? So then your soul is going to say, okay, I need to be like this, 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 and this, and not these things in order to get where I'm going. So the belief is that you already have this like, 
perfect MO and the day you come here, you're already born living as your higher self, but then you come into the world and then the world says, you need a morning routine or you need to be like this to be loved or <laughs> whatever it is. You need to eat this way. You need to do this to be validated and blah, blah, blah. So the, the journey with human design is like, it's the blueprint of what you inherently are. And if you can live that way, then it's actually much more easeful. There's more flow. You're not bumping up against so many roadblocks all the time. Um, mm -hmm. And you're not swayed off your path all the time by people saying, you need this, you need that. Be more like this. You know what I mean? All that yeah. stuff that creates all the noise and the insecurity. and um, Yeah, and has yeah. you out of control because you don't know which way you're going. You don't have your own North Star. You're using everybody else's. Totally. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So walk us through what human design really is and, and what kind of drew you to this. So when you said you did the test, what you did was you like put in your exact birth details, including your specific birth time into the website, our website, which is myhumandesign.com. That's where you can get all the information about how you function and um, how I came to it was I in my early 20s was like very into um, spirituality I was kind of reading all the books going to all the talks like just searching 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 but it was a funny thing that happened because I felt like there's a lot of like spiritual platitudes that kind of get thrown around and I almost felt like I was like failing at it because I was just like I'm just not getting like practice gratitude or just, you know, be your higher self or whatever. I was like, I don't know what, like I, you kind of sometimes need to like grip it and understand like how that looks for you. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so when I, um, I met the shaman when I was 25 or 26 years old and he did many different things on me. He was a manifesting generator. So I'll get into that in a second, but true to manifesting generator style, he was like pulling on many different strings. And one of the things he did on me was human design and I was like how have I never heard this before it's so accurate it's so specific it's so this is how you need to do things which is what you were looking for yes. or which is what you technically needed because the other stuff wasn't working yeah it was all just like <clears throat> release everything that doesn't serve you I was like I don't what what doesn't yeah. serve me how do <laughs> like, I do that tell me. Yeah. <laughs> and how do you do it exactly yeah. so that's what I liked about it is I resonated with like the specificity of it you know um and I think it's more practical because it really grounds, it really takes it down and says, okay, well, what is alignment for you? You know, what is your digestion? How does it function? What is your, you know, way that you're going to um, make decisions or have clarity? How does your intuition actually sound in your body? Do you know what I mean? And so it was this light bulb when I discovered it because I was like, this is just like a whole other thing. Um, and I think if you're someone who... Um, needs the sort of like um the specifics it's really helpful yeah so how did you get into this because I'm always fascinated when young people get to it before trauma or did you have a trauma or did you have some you know like even at the Joe Dispenza retreat he's like most people wait till it's like you know wow. really bad to get to this work really <clears throat> So, so I've always been fascinated with how do we get people there, which is kind of the goal with the show every day. Mm. How do we get people thinking about these things in a non-aggressive way, just a kind of, you know, let's just talk about stuff and let's just start to have it enter our awareness and, and be in our kind of, you know, our vortex. And then maybe we'll grab something and, mm. you know, maybe we'll grab another thing and yeah. keep adding things into our toolbox so that you don't have to wait till that devastating diagnosis that's so beautiful. So um, one of the things that I picked up early on in my 20s was Kabbalah. And in Kabbalah, they say that, you know, the universe is literally designing the perfect challenges for you to get you to grow. And if you don't listen, they get louder. That was That's nothing crazy now to you or I, but yeah. me being 22, I was like, well, oh my gosh. So then when I heard that, I was like, okay, well, the, clearly the thing is, is to keep your ears open before things, before shit hits the fan, right? Yeah. So um, that was what sort of made me, super curious um before things were terrible but at the same time um I grew up in a I think my sort of I don't want to even call it trauma but my sort of like pain point as a child was like not really understanding what everyone was like rushing around doing all the time like I just didn't get life like no one seemed that happy to me no one seemed that kind of like emotionally connected there was it wasn't just 
I guess I had this idea of what life could be like and I just thought everyone was not getting it and I just wasn't understanding like what this whole thing was about. That's so interesting. So, so I just thought everyone was a bit stupid, <laughs> including my parents. I told my sister when I was eight years old, I was like, they're just a bit dumb. Like they're just our parents. <laughs> I know. Oh my God. <laughs> no. Wow. Not in like a derogatory way. I just was like, they're just, they're just people. Like I just like, what are they doing? Like yeah. they're so serious all the time. And they're like running around doing this and that. I'm like, Were they just like high anxiety, frenetic? Like not even, what was it? I don't know. They just, no one seemed like, I don't know. No one would like sing on the street and twirl and just be happy. You know what I mean? It just seemed weird to me that that wasn't. <laughs> Wait, she was living in Disney World. They were living in like the regular 3D exactly. world. And she's like, why are you guys I'm not like, like, like. I'm not getting it. Why aren't you singing like it's a beautiful day? <laughs> Which I do now. <laughs> That's so funny. But at eight, you were aware of that? I was like, what is this whole thing about? It's so heavy. Like what, what, is, what on earth is going so on So then here? did you ever fit in in school? I imagine I was very shy, but I was good at, um, I wasn't, I, I ha I'm not one of those people that says like, Oh, I felt like I was never, you know what I mean? Because I think I, then I probably was like, okay, well I can figure out how to like play the game. So let's just like follow the rule. You know what I mean? So that yeah. was probably my kind of veer off point. Mm. Um, but then, you know, that's why I think I ended up going heavy into spirituality in my twenties. And, um, so it, what's interesting is that my conditioning and conditioning is obviously what we talk about a lot in human design is like everything that tells you to be something then other than what you are is conditioning. Mm -hmm. So the whole goal is to decondition yourself from all the things that are the sort of external pressures and to really click back into your inside um, GPS. And um, so my conditioning was actually really about like have a business, be a badass, like work hard, get up at 6 a.m., grind. Like that's how you prove yourself. It was almost more important to me to work hard than to do well out of it. And so when I first found human design, it was a really interesting thing for me because um, firstly, no one was doing spirituality at the time. No one was definitely doing human design. That, that was not cool. And um, it was just like a sleeping How science. long ago was this? This is eight years ago. People, but people were doing spirituality eight years ago. I mean, we Ish. had Wayne Dyer doing it 20 years yeah, ago. And, but I mean, not in the way that now everybody's got a crystal in their house. And do you know what I mean? It wasn't definitely not cool on Instagram in, in the in the way that it is that's now. That's the distinction. Yeah. yeah. It's, it maybe wasn't like cool with the young people and yes. Instagram. But spirituality has been around for a long yeah. time. And crystals have been around for a long time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It just wasn't the in thing. It just wasn't like part of the kind of mainstream I guess, but yeah popular yeah culture. now everybody's manifesting exactly yeah, yeah 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 okay so um i i was so afraid because i was so good at it but i just thought where's this gonna go i'm just gonna end up like um you know with a wig and a crystal ball and just being wheeled out of the lottery type of thing like i can't do this because <laughs> where's it gonna go do you know what I mean so that was a real lesson like that's why I think I believe in alignment so much because it's like no matter what random thing pulls at you if it's part of your like gifts and it's in your in your sort of magic lane what I call it there's no limits to how where you can go if you freaking love floristry then don't shut it down by thinking oh well I can only make a you know good career if I'm a fashion influencer or whatever because you could end up being the biggest florist in the country and have online deliveries and have every wedding you know totally it's just so <laughs> many things you can do with it if it's real like your thing right yeah um so I started I doing love that you just said that because I think you know nowadays it's like everybody feels like they have to just be an influencer yeah. <clears throat> and in fashion specifically or um or they don't see the other paths mm. that are connected to their passions maybe it's more like that where yeah you know floristry is a really great example like flowers are so beautiful look at what jeff latham if you don't know jeff latham look him up on instagram he does all the kardashian events he has built the most insane business and brand off of flowers. Yeah. He makes the most gorgeous arrangements for the Four Seasons hotels and wow. all this stuff. He's incredible. But, you know, it's not something you would generally think. Mm -hmm. If you went to your mom and dad and you're like, I want to be a florist. Mm -hmm. They're just going to think of the little store down the street. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you have a deep passion for it, you can do so much with anything. Literally. 
So I'm really glad you just said that because I think a lot of people need to hear that. Whatever it is, if your passion is honey, Mm -hmm. I don't know. Your passion is feta cheese. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Continue. Sorry. So it's just fascinating to me that it's that and we're conditioned over and over and over again. Everybody's talking about conditioning from childhood, but it's like every day that you pick up your phone, you're getting reaffirmed that there's only five career options, one way to do life. Like, and it's so limiting to all of us. And that's what, I mean, that's what makes me so passionate is like helping people become individualized. Cause I think that that's how we create the better world. It's like everyone's doing the puzzle piece that they're supposed to be doing. Everyone's taking their shape. Then everybody just fits better together. Do you know what I mean? So... Oh, exactly. Yeah. Oh, my so I just goodness. pointed at the show's name. I'm like, yeah, oh, exactly. Oh, that's so sweet. We are better together. It's true. Yeah. So... And I like that you're, you're focusing on creating individuals because... Mm. It's so funny. Like we were somewhere recently and I go, honey, look, everyone's dressed the same. Because yeah. we play that game in Italy. We were in Italy and I said, watch every couple. They mirror each other. They're wearing the same kind of sneakers, same kind of jeans, both <coughs> wearing raincoats, both have rain hats. Or then it's like the young girls and they're wearing the high-waisted jeans with the crop little black top <laughs> with the little like pony and like everyone is the same. Yeah. No one wants to be an individual. No, exactly. Because we're trained mm-hmm. to just, oh, that's what we're supposed to wear? Cool. Let me go get that. Yeah. It's totally that. It's, but in and it's everything. getting narrower and narrower and narrower. So how do you teach someone to be an individual? I think the first step, and well, this is how I do it, is you hold the mirror up and say, these are the things that you are good at. And, you know, you being an amazing nurturer makes you, obviously no one grow, like told you that would make you, that could make you a billionaire when you were growing up, but you don't realize you're so good at it because it comes easy to you. Mm-hmm. And so then you assume that everyone else is good at it too. Yes. And that's where we don't see our gifts because we just are so anthropocentric that we assume everyone is the same. So like the reason you would sit down on that s- stool would be like the same reason I would sit down on that stool, but it isn't. So we're seeing everything through our lens. So we think our heart is everyone's heart. We think our easy is everyone's easy. When you have like an outside system that says, no, you are really good at this, or you mm-hmm. really care about people, or you're amazing at systems, or you're amazing at explaining things. Logic comes easy to you. It doesn't come easy to everybody. Stuff Common like that. sense. Not easy for everybody. Not easy for everybody. You know, what's so great about that is my husband recently had a session with someone And she said, you've always thought your strength was like your physical, like I can get everything done. I can like, you know, refinish houses. I can do everything for everyone. And Mm -hmm. she was like, your actual gift is your, um, it was your kindness and your heart or something. Yeah. And how he gives to others. Yeah. And he's really, it really resonated with him and it really connected because he's like, I never would have thought of that. Even just hearing you say nurture. Mm. We've always joked that I'm not the caretaker and that Kevin's the caretaker, which he is the caretaker and he's amazing at it. Mm. But I was never put in a position officially where people got to see it and it's like true light until my mom got sick. Wow. And my husband was like, oh my God, I'm seeing a whole other side of you. And I'm like, well, it was always there. Mm. I just had to work in a tornado 24 seven so I could barely take care of myself, forget, showcase this side that I have in there. Um, but then you do, you think everybody has the same thing. So mm-hmm. you, that's, that's the biggest problem mm-hmm. we have guys is we don't realize that we are unique Yeah, and we don't realize that we come with a special set of gifts that are not, um, that are not, um, you know, in the masses, everyone's mm-hmm. different. Mm-hmm. So if we were able to harness that and say, oh no, this is my true gift. Mm-hmm then you could run with it. Damn, that's Mm. really good. And then the other layer on top of that, though, is that we think the only thing that are going to make us successful, the only things that are genius are either like athletic prowess or creativity or like being a hacker, you know, like a tech person. But genius is comes in so many forms and it sounds unglamorous when you first start anything. Do you know what I mean? Like starting just being a florist, Mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm making floral arrangements. Like most people are going to that's going to go over the heads or like Jeff Bezos was like, I'm starting a being, I don't know, being a librarian online. That doesn't sound amazing. Or like Elon Musk, I'm an engineer. Like the beginning of anything doesn't sound this like, wow, amazing thing. So it's almost like you have to, um, almost like have faith in where it could go without needing to see it to explore like, okay, that is a type of genius that I have. Mm -hmm. It isn't because, because I'm witnessing actually when I do it, 
And then I see other people try to do it or, you know, it's in the contrast that we can then see, okay, if I give it energy and see how easily it picks up for me, then that's not a run of the mill thing that happens every day. Like I really think when you're in your lane, that's when there's not so many obstacles because the universe is keep saying, okay, keep going, honey. Let's, let's give you this alignment. Let's send you mm-hmm. all the resources, all the synchronicities. Cause that's its way of signaling to you. Like you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. So cool. So so you're basically helping people see and and see their gifts. That's really cool. And see how they function too. So one of the <clears throat> one of the parts of it is what your gifts are and the other parts is like how you work. Like what are your energy levels? How do you work with them rather than against them? Not everybody's built for wake up, go to a nine to five, have consistent energy, then stop at the end of the day. Like that's not everybody's MO. Not everybody um, is going to thrive with a consistent morning routine. Not everybody is going to manifest in the same way. Not everybody's meant to have a strategy and a business plan. Some people are supposed to go with the flow more. Some people are supposed to be more structured. Um, So all these practical things that I think it's really validating to hear, for example, if you think that you've had to have a business plan and it's never worked for you, to then have just a permission slip from the outside to say, maybe actually you can do it without. And then you try it and you're like, oh, wow, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is working. Well, a lot of us, and it was funny, at the, the Joe Dispenza event, I watched so many of us women suffer from, am I doing this right? Mm. Is this the right way? Mm. Whatever it was and how much it held people back rather Mm -hmm. than kind of like when I would try to will something in a meditation, it didn't work. But then when I surrendered, stuff would happen. So (gasps) that's when I was learning the lessons of, okay, surrendering so powerful because then the unknown can come. Yeah. And so the same thing I think with this, it's like you have to, you have to just, um, be okay with and and understand that it's okay that you don't know everything. And that's the problem. I think with a lot of us, we don't Mm. want to do anything unless we think we're perfect. Mm. We're never going to get perfect. So we're never going to get to do anything. Yeah. And you know, the, um, we had this, one of the shark tank, um, cast members on and she was so amazing. Barbara Corcoran. Oh, wow. And she said, you know, don't think you have to have the business plan. Don't think you have to Mm. have all these things in place. Figure out what you want to do, make a few of them, take it to the streets, see if people like it, get real time feedback. And if it works, just start going, start Mm -hmm. doing it. It was like the biggest ad for Nike, just do it. Amazing. And I was just having such an aha moment. I'm like, oh, so I don't have the, have to have the perfect business plan. I don't have to have all the trademarks. I don't have to have (laughs) all the stuff that like will end up preventing you from getting there because it'll be financially costly before you even have the resources, let's say in some cases, um, and then just get bogged down in all the other stuff rather than the juice, the, the juice. passion that you're, you've had for whatever it is you want to do. Mm. Um, I love that. It's, it's really fascinating because I think people have less faith in their ability to whatever you're doing. It's the energy that it's the magic of us being in our, um, in our special genius that, you know, that principle of entrainment, like when you go up here, it's actually just by you being there that people can also like do their own quantum leaps. Mm -hmm. So when you're buying something from someone or whatever it is that they're putting out there, actually what you're getting is like, is it raising your frequency and you don't need like a board member, you know, 20 board members before you even (laughs) just begin to like make your thing sometimes. Cause that's the, it's like um, the direct hotline to however, God or the universe is like expressing itself through you. You know what I mean? Like when you go to a concert and you see someone so talented and you just like, there's just like something moving through them, you know, that's Mm -hmm. the, that's the thing that infects all of us positively in a positive way. Well, we also had another guest, I'm I'm blanking on her name. She created the toothpaste stuff bite. Oh, Lindsay McCormick. Lindsay Mm -hmm. McCormick. And she was like, I am building this myself slowly I don't have investors. Mm. The, the the consumers are my investors. They keep, you know, buying and then I keep getting to invest. And that's another thing that um, I love sharing with people on the show is sometimes it's better to do it on your own because yeah. then you have to have bosses because mm-hmm. whether it's your company or not, the second you take investment, you have bosses now, you have people you have to please and then you have to compromise your integrity sometimes mm. or be in a situation where you might have to compromise your integrity 
to be able to keep moving forward, which is interesting. Yeah. Okay. So tell me how this all kind of starts. Someone comes to you, they say, Hey, I want to, I want to discover human design. I want to discover my human design. Mm -hmm. How does it work? Not today. Yes. Okay. So, um, the best way to figure it out now is that, um, through the app, which we, which we built, um, we launched it in September because when I was doing one-on-one readings, I, um, I started doing them on the side cause I had so much fear and so much shame about like just becoming some off the radar non-business person with a, you know, fortune teller type. So you do actual readings. I used to do readings. Okay. So, um, basically I started doing it on the side of my food. I had a food business at the time. I started doing it on the side and then I started making more money in the side thing than I did in the food thing. And I watched all these people zoom past me in the food business and I was like, okay, this is clearly not working for me. So I started doing readings and my wait list grew to a year and a half without me even like just out of nowhere, like people would recommend me, whatever. So I was like, okay, people need to know this and I can't do this myself. So I need to figure out a way to get people this information ASAP. So I started doing video courses on my website, which is now my human design. Now you can also look up your um, chart on there and get the full information. And we built our own software and the whole thing. And then I was thinking to myself, there's so many people telling their friends and you need to be able to discuss it in real time. And you also need it accessible and to be able to listen to it like a podcast in your ear and to just pull on, oh, what was it, that thing about my digestion and da, 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 or I need to look up yours if I'm sitting with you and whatever. So we built an app where you can basically, it's called My Human Design and you can literally, you put your birth details in, it tells you everything. It's like getting a full reading from me. You get a custom daily tip that's um, telling you how to, you know, like a practical way of aligning to your design. You get, um, to look up anyone in your family as well and get full readings for them, written and audio. And, um, also daily voice notes about this kind of stuff that we're talking about condition, how to decondition and that kind of stuff. So it's all there and it's for, you know, a latte a month, basically you just get, cause I, one of the things I don't like about spirituality is like everything is $555 or 1111 and no one, I don't, I didn't have that money to pay when I was first getting into spirituality. And I didn't like that. It was kind of gatekept behind all these like fancy courses. And I really have discovered with human design, cause I've done readings for so many different kinds of people. This shouldn't just be for people who are singing mantras and doing meditations and whatever, because everybody on the planet wants to know a little bit more about how they function. Mm -hmm. Everybody can benefit from it in a non-woo-woo, non-gatekept type of way. So we've left out all the kind of obvious spiritual languaging um, so that literally whoever you are, there's some, it's easy to understand and it's in just very grounded, normal language. Yeah. So what are, are there, there are different segments obviously to human design, right? So let's walk through some of those. Yeah. So what you were saying you are, you're a manifesting generator Mm -hmm. and that's called your energy type. And that's a little bit like saying your sun sign in uh, astrology. It's like the number one, like what's your sign? It's It's like the the top line. Yeah. So your energy type is basically how your energy patterns function, how you exchange energy with the world around you. Because everything you do in life is either giving energy or receiving energy. So what does that relationship look like to you and other people, to you and the universe, to you and the unseen forces? So um, out of the energy types, there are five different energy types. And then um, below that, you have how your intuition functions, which some people have their instinct. Some people are supposed to listen to their gut. It's different. Some people are supposed to listen to their heart, their emotions, um, their minds. Um, Different people have different ways that your intuition is actually looks and feels like, which is really interesting. Um, Then you have your profile and there's, that's more like your- Wait, hold on. That's such an interesting thing to focus on. Mm -hmm. Because we always talk about listening, listening to your yourself and your inner guidance, mm-hmm. but I never thought about it in that way where it's in different forms and, and being able to take stock of what form it's coming to you in most, you know, prominently, Strongly. right? Yeah. And, and then you probably can then really understand which one to trust. Yes. Huh. And then you also, it becomes easier to discern which voices are not that voice, right? Because then you have like the voices of 
your mum that you internalize that sounds like you now so much and you're mm-hmm. like hold on a second but that's not coming when it's supposed to come and that's not feeling how it's supposed to feel so that's an outside voice that I've taken on and learned and being conditioned with so um those two things, learning your energy type and learning how your intuition works, they say are those like, if you just know those two, you would end up actually living according to all the other categories as well naturally, because your intuition would naturally lead you there and you'd be using your energy the right way to get there. Got it. So those are like life-changing in themselves. Like those two things are enough. You know what I mean? So Um, cool. Yeah. Okay. So that was the first one. So you have your energy type, you have your intuition you have your profile. That's your personality, basically. So what's interesting as well is that your personality in human design is composed of two different types, two different um, facets of your personality, because you have your personality that you see yourself as, and then you have the side that other people see more clearly in you. So sometimes we can get confused because we think like, who am I? Because I'm, I feel like I'm this. And sometimes somehow when I'm with other people I feel more like this side of me and they're both the same they're both part of you there's not one that's more true than the other but it's about integrating what's more conscious in you and what's more subconscious or you're unaware of so that's your personality that tells you a lot about like how you learn how you show up in the world how you interact with others how you're supposed to lift other people up how you come to your genius there's a lot to um, your personality profile and then you have um, your signature, which is how you know you're in alignment. Your not self, which is how you know you're out of alignment. Your strategy, which is your, the way you make things happen in the world. You have your digestion, which is how you digest information and food. Anything from the outside world obviously needs to be digested, including energies as well. You have your strongest of your six senses. You have um, whether you're emotional or non-emotional, mm. also a biggie. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on. We have 13 categories in the app. And I mean, we're always adding more and more. We're, then wow. you have your gift. Then you have all your gifts, which could be, I mean, you could have like 20 gifts. You could have 60 gifts. Um, you could potentially have 64 gifts. So it doesn't really happen, but you'd have like a number of those. Um, you have your incarnation cross, which is like the theme of your life, the purpose of your life. Like, what did you come here to do? Um, and there's 192 life themes yeah. Like what? So it could be like, I mean, it's so crazy. They could be as specific as like, you're here to make sp- beautiful spaces or you're here to um, explain things to people in a clearer way, or you're here to become an alpha male. And example. how do you get to that information? How does that come <laughs> up? Okay. So um, that specific one is... Um, or you want to know like in general how all these things come well, up. Just let's start with that one specifically. That one specifically is the fact that um, the placements of the planets, you have your sun. So your incarnation cross is made up of four different numbers. The position of the sun when you're born, the position of the sun six months before you're born, the position of the earth when you're born, and the position of the earth six months. Not so six it months is astrology. Before it's, ast- it's astrology based. Yeah. But it's... Um, it's based on the idea that we live in a what's called a neutrino field. So it's um, we're swimming in like thousands and thousands and billions and billions of subatomic particles that contain information. So when you walk into this room, there's energy in the room, right? And so the exact time and space and place that you were born in had a specific energy and your soul chose that launch pad, that energy to like launch through. And so that tells you about your starting place, your essence, what it is that you were before everything else kind of came to you Mm -hmm. and the um planets are all um streams of neutrinos so they're they're the things that are emitting these neutrinos that we're feeling in in uh on earth at any given point so knowing where they are and what they're streaming at any given time tells us about when you chose to come in and what was that kind of starting place for you it's so interesting because I know with astrology, um, it's been so poignant for me when you're like, mm. oh my God, how do you know me so well? <laughs> and so you're like, oh, okay, I'm completely, I'm on the right track because this is what yeah. the chart's saying too. And this is where I'm naturally going or have been. Mm. So I always tell people if you're feeling a little lost, it's nice to get that done because Definitely. you get a little more clarity. Friends, if yeah. you're watching this on YouTube right now, you can find out what your design or energy type is 
um, queen, where do they go to take this quiz? You can go to myhumandesign.com, right, Jenna? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Or the app. My yes. Human Design app. So if you want to know whether you're a manifesting generator mm -hmm. like us gals are, what are you, mm -hmm. by the way? I'm a projector. A projector. Yeah. And what is a projector? So shall I tell you about the five types? Yes. A little yes. Bit? yes. Yeah. So because that's like the main sort of um, thing that people can. It's so cool. The three of you, though, are MGs. That's kind of crazy. That's kind of wild, Do you right? get so much done? <laughs> we do. Yeah, we do, actually. <laughs> we do. Yeah. We get a lot done. People yeah. come in and they're like, how do you guys do as much as you do? Yeah. Yeah. Because you're MGs. That's but it's, why. But it's strange. And I was saying earlier, the girls, like Kelsey and Pooja, are very different humans. Mm hmm and they both have their own skill sets that are very yeah. different. That's why they're complementary. Mm -hmm. And so, and I think I have my own thing too. So I think the three of us are different. Mm -hmm. um, Completely. If anything, I think Kelsey and I are more aligned in, in our stuff. And our um, incarnation cross is the same too. <gasps> is it? Yeah, Moran mm -hmm. mine are. That's I, why I forget what the incarnation. So that's the theme is. of your life. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So wow. Funny. That's so because that's one in one hundred and ninety-two possibility that that would happen. Then. Oh. Whoa. Damn. That's wild. That's crazy. Yeah. That's why you're, and that's what's interesting about human design is I think people think that um, your energy type must mean that you're the same. But there's only five, right? So that wouldn't mean you're the same as you know whatever a billion people or two billion people or something crazy. The only thing you guys have in common is how you use your energy. Because you're three manifesting generators, right? Yeah. So your energy patterns function the same. That's why I said you guys will get a lot. We'll all get a lot done. Yeah. You'll all be able to handle. So manifesting generators are people who are the sort of classic multi hyphenates in the world. Um, you know, they're doing a lot of different things at the same time. They're interested in a lot of different things at the same time. And because they're supposed to do many things and wear many hats, they're they're able to master things much more quickly than other people. Because it's like the universe is like, okay, you need to learn to play the harp like quick. So you get the lesson and then integrate 100%, it. A hundred percent. That's always been me. Kevin's like, how the frig do there you, you go. just go out there and then you're good at it? I'm mm -hmm. like, I don't know. It just happens. There you go. Except for golf. <laughs> Can't do golf. I look like I was playing hockey. Mark Wahlberg looked at me and he's like, are you okay? And I'm like, I know how to play hockey. I guess golf isn't my thing. It's not the same. <laughs> yeah. So that was the one time I re oh, and, and baseball. Suck at baseball. Cannot do that well. But everything else has been really good. <laughs> so when you guys are passionate about something, you can pick it up like this. Yes. And so then it can also be quite frustrating because you have to understand that not everyone works at the same pace, right? So you guys get the quick mastery. You're able to integrate many different things. So mm -hmm. that's MGs. They're like super passionate about many different things. I always use Jessica Alba as an example because she has her eco baby company and she's acting. Yeah. It's like if you told someone at 15, that's what you wanted to do with your life, people would be like, no, you have to choose one. Yes. Somehow though, when an MG is okay with having so many different things they're into mm -hmm. and they integrate it and they own it, people go along with it. And they're like, yeah. oh, that's so cool. How do you, uh, amazing. And it's so believable, but yeah. only because once you've lived it, no one's going to believe it before you live it. You yeah. know, Tony Robbins is another classic example or Angelina Jolie, who's just like directing and acting and adopting babies and UN. And you know what I mean? It's like, that's the MG mm -hmm. energy. So that's manifesting generators. Then you have generators and generators are kind of more slow and dedicated to one thing and then just building a mastery and almost like a romance with that one thing mm -hmm. over the course of their <clears> life. <throat> so I wish I was a generator sometimes. Do you? Yeah, because I feel like whenever I've slipped into generator mode, I've been my happiest. So mm -hmm. whenever I've taken an acting role, for example, because it's not my my focus in life and my strength, let's say, hosting and all the other things I can do blindfolded, that I have to work harder at. Mm. Um, maybe because I don't do it enough, I'm more insecure and nervous and all of that. So anytime I've had an acting role, I've shut everything else down. Mm. I've put all my focus into it and I'm so happy. Wow. Because juggling a million balls gets so exhausting. Mm. And and doing it for a long period of time mm -hmm. at the highest of levels gets really exhausting. So those were always yeah. like some really nice breaks. Yeah. Where I just get to have fun. That's so interesting. So I love being I love dropping in a generator mode. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can switch around, but I feel like I switch around. It's interesting <laughs> because with MGs, that's the other thing, is that just because you can wear all the hats. So generators are manifesting generators are ruled by their gut. So if you're if you're not excited by something, that's universe's way of saying I actually don't want you to be doing things. So their big struggle is because they are hyper hyper capable, they 
can do everything, but it doesn't mean that they should do everything. Mm -hmm. And so it's funny that you're saying that you enjoy actually being able to drop some hats and that would be like a good thing for you to just, um, you know, keep on asking yourself is like, because once they pull something in, they're supposed to let it go if it no longer excites them. Mm -hmm. But they, then they get used to like holding on to it, right? Instead of just being like, okay, done, six months, started this business, not in, into it anymore, over it type of thing. Yeah. Um, but generators are much more sort of slow. They pick it up slower. They romance it for a longer time. So then you have like the Oprah's of the world where she's just like one track, like this, just really doing her thing over and over or Beyonce, you know, just over and over singing, 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 performing, performing, performing. So it's a different, it's a completely different um, energy because it's more one, um, it's more one directional. And the skill is more one directional too. So it's, there's less of a, yeah, you know, hard to describe that, but it's a different energy when you're around people. There's like a, yeah, versus you like, can this jump is in more than, anything at any time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. Um, yeah, I always think every energy type has FOMO of one of the other yeah. energy types. So <laughs> I'm always fascinated by MGs because I'm like, how do they do that? Um, so, so that's generators, manifesting generators, and then you have manifestors. So, sorry, just to go back to generators, they're people that are here to, when they are doing something they love, it becomes so kind of like juicy to other people and other people love to be around them. And it's so kind of just like warm and sweet and sparkly type of thing. Manifesting generators has a more expansive quality to it where it's like, oh, you make me feel limitless. And what else could I do? And I believe in all the things about this world and you make it all feel possible. That's that kind mm -hmm. of effect that they have on other people. Um, now, manifestors are much more the kind of people that are just going to like, have this random urge to do something, start it, and then they're just going to completely leave it alone. And then they're going to check out for, you know, years or months or whatever. So they, their energy is much more, I'm at 200% or I'm, then I'm down at 20%. And, um, maybe that's Kevin. It would be interesting to know. Sounds like Kevin. Mm. That would be really interesting to know. So, and you were saying about how he doesn't understand that you can just kind of like pick things up quickly yes, and stuff. Yes, and he can't and he gets frustrated. So it's so hard to like, mm -hmm. you know, because that compare game, like the yeah. Joe Spencer stuff, he wants to do it, but he's scared he's not going to be good at it. And I'm like, honey, this is your block though. You don't do things sometimes because you're afraid mm -hmm. you're not going to win or you're going to feel like less than. So that's why you have to do it and you have to work through that block. Mm, that's, that's my thought. That's really interesting. Yeah. So manifestors, they are very spontaneous they feel like they, um, every king and queen and conqueror in history has been a manifesto basically. So they're real, like when they do something, they just go off and they're just brave enough to go and do it. Somehow people just follow and then they end up creating movements. So you have like Gloria Steinem and JK Rowling and they just like create worlds within worlds that other people want to like follow into, mm -hmm. but they're not supposed to carry everyone there. They're just supposed to go cause they want. And then other people end up doing it with them type yeah. of thing. He's carried everyone. That's where his problem's been. <laughs> The classic, <laughs> classic manifesto. Let me just poll everyone and see who wants to come. Let me. Yeah. Where do you guys all want to go? Because I'll make it happen for you. Rather than yes. just being like, I'm going, this is what I'm doing. And then people are like, oh my gosh, I want to come too. That makes it sound so fun. But yeah. because you're so self-certified that it makes it look good, you know? Wow. So Interesting. that's manifestors. And Adele is a manifesto. And I was listening to an interview with um, that she did recently. And she was saying, I put out an album. But then I literally rest for two years after the album because I'm like dead after that. And I'm like dead to the world. And then I put out another one and it takes me a year. So you literally only see her every three years. And I was like, wow, that's so true. But I didn't even notice. I wasn't mm. even clocking that she was not present, but she's using her energy correctly because she's either at 200 yeah. or she's back down at 20. Well, so And her music ends up lasting that whole time because you didn't miss her. Exactly. So there's this fear of like, oh, if I'm not doing consistent nine to five, we all have that in some way. Like if I'm not kind of fitting into the way the rest of the world works, I'm doing it wrong. Yeah. But then you see someone, I think it helps to see someone who's successfully using their energy the way that works for them. Cause then you're like, oh, okay, possible, you know? Yeah. So that's so funny. Cause um, not to bring it back to Kevin, but I keep hearing it. Wow. He used to work in the carny business like really, really intensely hard to save money to be able to come to LA and write. So he would like work really hard in his winters and then come out here for his summers. And so he had that period where he would work and then 
this was just kind of his play. So I think he had that kind of rhythm and then he fell out of that rhythm. That's interesting. That's really fascinating. A lot of, I mean, if you say yes, I mean, maybe you don't know the answer to this, but a lot of manifested kids when they're young, they just want to raise themselves. They want to what? They want to raise themselves. They like know how to raise themselves. They often ask to be like homeschooled or they choose, they decide to choose their own school from their parents. They're like very sure of what they want from their parents. And so um, the classic sort of parenting is like, no, your kids can't be the boss of you because that's what manifestors come to be. They're like leaders, manifesting energy. I was the boss from go. I'd be so And I was like, I walked at eight months. I'm like, get me. I need to get, I need to go. That's like, the that you because you guys are the quickest. Yeah, and also I'd be interested to know what your profile, your personality profile is too, because there's some personality profiles where they want to like, for example, like do you, are you driven by like saving the day and like championing things, or do you need to know everything? And so those would also intersperse. You know, then you have so many different combinations mm. of different kinds of human beings. It gets really interesting. I have Maria's if you want it. Oh. What is her profile? Her profile is one third the establisher. One three. Yeah. Yeah. So, so num- the the one is your internal personality. So that's the person that always wants to figure it out, always wants to know the answer. Like, yeah. how do I establish a solid foundation for myself? Yep. That's why you're probably so curious about so many different things. Mm-hmm. And then the three <clears throat> is like, but I also have to try it out for myself and I have to test it and I need to experiment and I need to try things on. So actually it's funny, one threes are the classic spiritual seekers mm-hmm. because they want to know like, not just like how this works and how this whatever, but they're like, okay, well, once I figured all that out, what comes after that? And then needing to try it all and like see what works and see what doesn't. Mm-hmm. And also to launch yourself into this like roller coaster of life and like see what the ups are, see what the downs are, where did the gifts come? Like with the learning from all three. And so a lot of the times with threes as kids, when you have a three in your profile, you're like, I need to know, like you stop telling me, what, I need to like go and try this yeah. and see what to do and like, let me fail at it. And, you know, so there's, I mean, there's also a whole layer of parenting on this because you parent different kids, different profiles, different ways, right? So you wouldn't sit you in front of a book all the time. You need to like let you learn, but then also yeah. try it. So I had, to, I had to do it to learn exactly. it and, or say it. Reading it bored me and exhausted me mm. and it was, I'd have to just read it quick, spit it back out to you to get it and Amazing. then move on. Or I, I don't like reading instructions to anything. Mm. I just got to put it together and fix it and figure it out yeah, and that's just a, do it. That's a classic three. <laughs> Threes. I hate instructions. We <laughs> laugh about ta- I, Taylor, um, the girl who's here with me is a three five and we always joke, all threes hate instruction manuals. Isn't Never read funny? them. Yeah. Never read instruction manuals Ever. if you have a three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm three too. I'm the same as Maria and I hate it too. I hate it. I'm like, here you go, Pooch. I can't. I That's I can't. why we love Pooch because she does the stuff that we Literally. don't. We, we just go. can't. It's against us. Yeah. There you go. It's it against makes me our sick. nature. <laughs> yeah. But this is what's so amazing to me is that when you are so clear on what your strengths are, not only are you more comfortable just doing whatever your thing is, but you're also more in awe of other people having separate strengths in you. So then this whole thing of like, oh, celebrate the other or like be yourself. There's actually like a groundedness to it. It isn't just like me trying to be celebratory of others whilst I'm still not understanding what's different about them or still not feeling the, how incredible that you get to be you and I get to be me. I'm not trying to be you. You're not trying to be me. And And like you just- You can be unapologetic. Like, that's not my thing. That's yeah. not my genius. I, yeah. I, that's not me. Yeah. You go. I'll yeah. do the other stuff. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. It's so freeing. Wow. It's really cool. So I'm a one three. You're a one three. Okay. Um, so, okay. So those are the first. Queen, what are you? One three. You're a one <gasps> three as well? I'm the same as you. Yeah. That mm-hmm. makes sense. It How? does make sense. Uh-huh. That's crazy. That, and you yeah. said we're both more similar. Yeah. Yeah. Maria and I yeah, are. I know. You have the same mm-hmm. profile well, and I, the same cross. I admire Pooja so much because she's so grounded and calm and I want to be more like her wow. in those ways because sometimes I, the energy builds up, not post Joe Dispenza because now I'm just so <laughs> sin because I'm meditating mm-hmm. hours a day. Love it. Um, but so now I am becoming more like Pooja, I think, but um but yeah, you. That's so cool. We have different makeups, but mm-hmm. I know that we're more alike. Yeah, mm. for sure. That's fast. Well, you you knew, and the chances of you having the same incarnation cross and the same energy type and the same personality profile is 
crazy. And we get along. <laughs> and we do <laughs> and we get love along. each other. That's right. <laughs> Which is very hard when you have someone who's so like you. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes I it's more challenging. Interesting. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I love it. And then, so then the last two energy types is you have projectors Mm -hmm. and projectors are people who are, they're more low, they're kind of lower on the energy scale than the manifestors, the generators, the manifesting generators. And projectors are people who are here to see something that could be done in a better way. So they're not, it's not for them so much about doing and like lighting other people up or proving things are impossible and wearing many different hats or starting movements. It's Mm -hmm. about saying, Hey, I see all you guys doing things, but um, if you want to get from A to B, try going via C or something, you know, try a new way, or this is a more improved way of doing something. So that's really projectors, but because they're supposed to be seeing and figuring things out, them trying to do to do and keep up with all the others is like such a waste of time because you're never going to be able to see if you're trying to keep up. Yeah. So that's projectors. And then reflectors, they're really rare. They're only 1% of the population. And reflectors are people who are supposed to, it's so funny, even in spiritual, um, you know, spiritual circles, the conditioning is like, figure out who you are. Reflectors are actually chameleons. And so the worst thing they can do is trying to figure out who they are. They're supposed to realize that actually they are the people who are supposed to sit so deep in this, in the seat of their own soul. You know, that expression of like, oh, who, what you see in others is what you see in yourself. Yes. It's like times a hundred in reflectors, because if they're really allowing themselves to not be any one thing, it takes two people to play this like some kind of ego dance about who we think we are and how we present. But if a reflector is just not playing that game, you can witness yourself so clearly when you're talking to a reflector because all your stuff becomes so apparent to you. That's like Whoa. when you sit with Yogi Cameron. Yeah. Have you ever felt that? Yeah. Like uh, you he, get so exposed for he, your madness or your like <laughs> your frenetic nature, whatever's but happening. I, it's yeah. so loud and you're like, oh shit. Because he kind of just sits there and lets you like spill it all out almost. He just is <laughs> and we're yeah. not. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. That's funny. It'd be so interesting to know if he was one because they're so rare. I'm always wanting to know like some examples of who to give. Wait, so. we should get Yogi Cameron's info. Yeah. Please send him. Please tell him if he's a reflector. Tell him that we're doing this human design thing, (laughs) and we have an idea of what he is, and we want confirmation and ask him for his stuff. He's traveling in Europe. We were just talking the other day, but he's amazing. Wow! And he's definitely a reflector. There is no chance I'd bet anything on my life. I agree. Yeah. Well, I mean, also with the name Yogi, and he's obviously aligned. He probably, oh, yeah. you know, like super aligned. Very, very likely that he is that. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. They are mirrors, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and the reason why we need them is because that's the highest form of wisdom. Is like not someone telling you what to do. It's allowing you to really witness yourself. Yeah, yeah. I had those moments at the Joe Dispenza retreat. Wow, where. I was presented with scenarios constantly where I'm like, oh, I need to fix that. Wow. Oh, it's me. Oh, I see. Wow. So it was really cool because, you know, I didn't use my phone for a week and I mm. just completely immersed myself in all of it. And there were definitely multiple moments where I saw stuff where I was like, oh, this is what's killing me. Oh, <gasps> this is something I need to change. Oh, it was really cool, Amazing. really powerful. So the whole event was a mirror. That's incredible. Mm-hmm. I, w- I really wanted, I've wanted to go for, somehow it always ends up not happening, but I've wanted to go for years and yeah. I'm sure when the timing's right, it will, it will happen. Yeah. I was fully booked to go and everything, but didn't work out this time. But I find him absolutely fascinating. He's oh, a full yeah. genius. Yeah. I just, the whole time I was there, it just kept hitting me. I'm like, this is it. This is the way. Wow. I've done so much work for so many years. I've interviewed so many people. I've tried so many things. Mm-hmm. Like you said, mm-hmm. I'm trying everything. <laughs> and everything has been good for each moment. Mm. But I really believe it culminated to this moment. And this is the way. Wow. Like 1 billion percent. This is the way. <clears throat> and it's it was the most profound experience of my life. That's amazing. Yeah. And like the most real life changing. Like, mm. I mean, yes, I shouldn't say that because each thing was life changing in its way along the way, but this is like life altering forever, which is super cool. Incredible. That's so, amazing. wow. Um, can our charts ever shift? So a little bit like in astrology, you have um, 
sort of what we call transits, which mm-hmm. would mean, for example, like the current position of the planets will be influencing you slightly differently. Yeah. Um, in the app, we always do energy of the day because there's always like an energy that's available to all of us and how we can make the most of it, that kind of thing. And that energy would affect you slightly differently than it would affect Puja, for example. But who you are never changes. You know, like the original mm-hmm. chart is what your you essence. Came here for. What you came here for. That's your essence. It's like, that's... And I think it's really, um, it's such an important humbling practice to, I think, especially in spirituality, because there's so much choice and so many options that the things that are really true with a capital T don't really change. They're the same things over and over again. And we're always kind of almost like looking for the new thing, but actually, like you're saying, like it's coming back to the same practices or the same truths or this reminding yourself of who you are over and over again takes discipline you have to do it every day Mm -hmm. because you're up against so much other stuff so that's also why um with the app it it was really important to me to have an app because you almost need a voice in your ear just keep coming back to you keep coming back to you keep coming back to you and it's difficult for us to do so even just having a practice where you're you know okay i have something i have something that i do that helps me come back to me yeah you know when you need the hand holding right? Mm Because I think there's so much information out there. What we really need is the handholding. What we really need is the practice, is the, when we falter something else to remind ourselves or to give us the permission slip to do it our way. Because, you know, there's always more to decondition from, right? Yeah. And it's the same shit over and over again. I'm like, oh, I didn't sleep on it this time, which I really need to do because I'm emotional. And I'm like, I reacted too quick. And now I feel differently about it the next morning you've been doing this for eight years and you still forget, yeah. <laughs> you know, Yeah, it's so simple. Well, also, you know, the exterior is always either telling us what to do, who to be, how to be. Um, and, and you have to battle all those forces, right? So that's why, you know, meditation and, and intentions are so powerful because you can kind of, you know, sturdy yourself when you go out into the world. Yeah. <clears throat> which is why I'm not going out into social media world anymore. And my life is getting so much better. Wow. Um, so it's, it's great because I'm not, I'm not influenced by anything outside anymore. Mm. I'm not watching any news. I'm not wow. looking at any Twitters. I'm not looking at Instagrams. I'm just living in my lane. And now I have more time for myself. I have more time mm. to create. I have more time to just be, mm. I actually got on Twitter the other day um, when the premiere of my, um, show came out on Netflix, just to see what was going on, what people were saying about it. And just like two, three minutes of it made me so dizzy. Wow. And I actually could feel it Mm. where when you're just doing it all the time, you're just constantly in that state and you think you're just exhausted because you're doing too much or whatever. I was like, Oh my God, no, this is just really, really powerful to have to just scroll through everyone's comments, everyone's thoughts, everyone's all that energy is just too much. And I'm like, Ooh, thank God I'm away from this and mm. not going back. Mm-hmm. Cause it's, it's a lot. Yeah. Isn't it so Ooh. scary though, to realize how used to it you are yeah. when you're like, when you pull out and you're like, Oh, I, I was doing it all the time and I didn't even, and that's in so many ways we all, that's happening to us all yeah. the time. Yeah. We so didn't even know, didn't even know it's, it's, it's mad. Actually yesterday, the, so the voice note of the day that I did yesterday in the app was about, the fact that and it was like a the first one I've ever done that's like inspired by popular culture but just to illustrate the conditioning thing is like how triggered people get over someone like Kim Kardashian saying she had to lose 16 she lost 16 Mm -hmm. pounds in three weeks or whatever and it's like that's such conditioning is like hearing when someone's doing something that is either working for them or not working for them who knows it's their thing but who it, it has zero bearing on what your MO is on your life right so all this stuff that we have to kind of, um, I guess, recognize that we're still programmable enough to say, when I look at this on social media, even if it's not conscious, it's making me think maybe I should be wearing yellow or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm using a silly example, but, you know, this this person is doing it, this doing life this way. We have to constantly, it's that discipline to say, this does not apply to me or this maybe doesn't apply to me. And if it does feel good to me, it's only because it's already my alignment and ours match in that specific one way. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean everything the way they're doing about their life, I should be doing as well. You know, like, but we should ourselves and what you're saying about women is like, we should all the time, all the time, all the time, even when we're not aware of it. Yeah. And where do you want to put your energy that when everybody was so hot on politics, I just kept saying, guys, Mm. 
really, you're like working yourself up so much and you want your opinion to be heard and you want to be right so bad. Just Mm. like (laughs) sit with your thoughts for a minute and just cleanse a little bit because (laughs) it's so consuming. Anyhow. And you know that most of the population, if you look at their gifts in human design and everything, a lot of people are not supposed to share their opinions with the world. And now we all And now we all are. Do. <laughs> oh, man. Um, this was such a great conversation. And um, friends, if you want to know more, you can go to Instagram, Jenna Zoe. We'll put everything in the summary of this episode so that you can find her, her app, and take your human design uh, quiz as well. Um, Jenna, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And um, friends, we're going to leave it right there for today. In the meantime, be nice people, make good choices, Mm -hmm. and be present.